Hey everyone, this will be part two of the Raspberry Pi dedicated RTSP viewer. So we'll be running a Ethernet line from my switch over here, up the trunk, across the room over there, to the mounted TV. And so first I'll show you kind of what the situation over there on the TV is and what the Pi looks like now, what I want to turn it into. We'll go over some of the tools I'm going to use. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a mix of everything. We're going to cut some drywall, install an old gang, an old workbox into the drywall run some ethernet, crimp some ethernet lines. So uh, it should be kind of a mishmash of all sorts of different stuff in this video that we'll go over. So let's walk over there and we'll look at the current setup on the TV. Okay, so here's the TV. And right now the Pi is just hooked up to it over the HDMI obviously. And it's just kind of dang dangling here. Uh, and there is actually an ethernet box right here, but I don't want to use it for this because I think I'm going to pull that line and probably put like a access point up here or something. And someday there might be a wall here. I might, I might divide this extra space into two rooms. So I don't want to lose that ethernet box for this particular purpose. And it's easy enough to run a line. Uh, so for context here, run a line from the switch over there up and over to this TV. So, um, not going to use that box and that's why I'm running a new line. And then I'll just, uh, run a power cord, get it, you know, nicely stapled up uh, into the TV to power that. And the Pi itself, and I'll go over this later, is actually gonna be powered over ethernet with this little PoE ethernet to USB conversion thing that uh, it's actually running off of now and that's working super nicely. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do though is I think I mounted this TV a little too high. So I'm gonna unmount it and I'm actually gonna put a square piece of drywall behind it. Uh, just, I don't have to do that, but I think it's just gonna look nicer. And in the drywall, we'll install a old workbox to put the ethernet jack in and lower this TV a little bit. And I, I think it'll work out pretty nicely. So first thing we'll do is I'll pull that TV down and then we'll go through cutting a piece of drywall, putting that up there. Uh, and then we'll run our ethernet line. TV's down, measured uh, the space for the drywall I want, roughly 30 by 30. We'll go upstairs in the garage, cut that piece of drywall, and get tooled up for all the other stuff we're gonna do. Okay, so this is a half inch piece of leftover drywall I have from when I was running, drywalling a portion of my garage. And I'm gonna cut a 30 and a half by 30 portion of it for mounting the TV against and the junction box for the ethernet cord. So, you really only need a few things uh, to cut drywall. It's just compressed powder in between two sheets of paper and you just need to have a straight edge and a utility knife to cut through that paper and then it's very easy to break the drywall in a clean, in a clean break. Um, so I'm gonna measure my 30 and a half here and then I'll use this drywall square to position it right there. And if I'm lucky, I'm going to need to mark it. I can find a silly knife and I'll just be able to just get work on the straight edge here. Yeah, that's going okay. Oops. Yeah, that'll be good enough for my purposes here. And then once you have your scoured cut on that paper side, Take it like this, and you can kind of bang it with your knee, and you get a really nice clean cut. Cut the paper on the other side. And there you go, you've cut your drywall. So I'll go ahead and do the other corner of this uh, off camera, it's the same process, and then we'll grab some tools. All right. Let's get tooled up here. We are definitely gonna need that. Drywall screws, gonna need those. Tape measure. Level for the ethernet box. Probably just gonna take all of this with me because need these to pull up the bolts on the mount. Probably gonna need to drill some pilot holes. Uh, we'll just take this whole thing. Probably bring a pencil, measurements and stuff. Uh, 
screwdriver. Probably gonna need that. We'll need this for later, if you know what I mean. This won't fit in the bag, but we're gonna need it. All right, that's looking pretty nice. So now what we'll do is I need to decide where to put the box where we'll have a ethernet jack. All right, that's where I decided to put it. Um, now we will actually run the ethernet to that before we put the box in. We have officially transitioned from drywall to ethernet. So I'm on the other side of the room here by the switch up on the bench and I'm going to pull the cable from here, set it up through these loops. I actually need to replace these clips up here. They're like way overburdened for the amount of cable running through them. So I'll do that as I go. And I measured, I need about 20 feet of cable to there. So what I'm going to do is I'll pull, I'll just go ahead and pull about 20 feet of this out, uh, snake it up there and try to film anything interesting along the way. Cables coming across the ceiling, had plenty of existing holes to run it through, uh, tacked it a little bit to the stud there so it looks nice. And I have left myself plenty of extra cable for a service loop, so I'll coil that up and shove it inside in case I ever want to move this box or, or make changes. It's really always really, really nice to have extra. Now uh, you can see like on the light switch there, I'm gonna have a similar little loop just in case anything ever needs to change. You don't have to rerun the entire cable. So we'll pop a box in there and uh, crimp down a connector. Wanted to give you a close up of what I was talking about. So here's that service loop, plenty of extra zip tied, tucked away. And then we'll take this box here, run that cable through, pop him in and tighten him down. And then we'll put on the ethernet jack. Looking good. I'll show you how I crimp that connector over by the switch on the other end. All right, so here's the other end of that wire, and this is kind of a rare situation where I get to sit down and crimp it. That doesn't happen very often. Um, so I won't go over this too much. I'll probably just time lapse it. But I will say, if you're just a hobbyist like me doing this for your home network, get one of these pass-through crimpers. So it's really nice. You strip the wires down, you throw one of these pass-through pass -through style uh, connectors on, uh, you crimp it down. You don't have to worry about getting the wires just the right length or anything like the traditional style. Um, if you're not doing this like day in and day out professionally and you're just like me messing around in your basement, highly recommend. Makes it so much easier. Um, so I'm going to crimp this now. My whole house was done in the B style. There's two styles, basically just the ordering of the wires. All that really matters is that they're on the, they're the same on each end. Uh, I've been using B over the whole house because the guys that networked it um, before we moved in were using B for whatever reason. So just trying to stay consistent. Uh, so yeah, I'll time lapse this, show you the pass through crimp at the end. Um, and then we'll pull up the tester and see if my uh, cable works. So here's that pass through part I was talking about on a traditional style connector, you have to get these wires just the right length and you slide it on and then you crimp it down. Uh, but with these, the whole thing, you slide it on and you can see the wires come out the top there. Maybe you can see that. Um, 
and these special style crimpers just crimp it down and cut those off. Uh, and it's just, it's for a, for a hobbyist like me, it's just so much easier uh, than getting really good. And I just forgot to put the boot on. Um, luckily I didn't crimp it down. I always do that. So we'll slide this on. That's another pro tip. <laughs> slide that on before you even start messing around. See, now I gotta line all my wires up again. All right, so the deal with this is you pass it through, crimp it down, and you can see it snipped off all the wires, and now I have a Ethernet jack that's crimped down, and I didn't have to be an expert. So now we'll get out the tester. Um, also highly recommend one of these. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'll plug this end in here. I'll go plug the other end uh, into the outlet. We'll turn this on and it'll tell us if the wire's working uh, before you proceed any further, basically. All right, moment of truth. Green, green pass. That means this one's good to go. I can throw this boot on, plug it into the switch, continue mounting the TV, and then uh, put the pie up there. All right, so I'm gonna put the pie in this case and then I'll Velcro it probably to the back of the TV. So the way I'm powering it is over ethernet. So I don't need another power outlet up there. It's pretty slick. So PoE comes in from the switch. That switch has plenty of juice. Uh, ethernet comes out for the Pi and also this USB comes out for the Pi. So it powers it all on the same, all in one ethernet jack, which is pretty slick. And so I'll probably put this on, I'll Velcro this to the top of the case as well. So I'll go ahead and get this put together. All right, so <laughs> not the prettiest thing in the world, but it'll work. Uh, and what's really nice is I only need to have an ethernet cord coming in here and it just turns on, does its thing, and it'll output the HDMI of the cameras like a, like a setup in the first video. So let's go put this on the back of the TV. We'll turn it on, make sure it still works, and I'll show you guys the finished product. So there we go, TV remounted, ethernet ran directly to this point, and because I felt like it, uh, it's all mounted to a nice little 30 by 30 piece of drywall, make it look a little better. So I got power from this outlet and just ran an extension cord up for the TV. Uh, I'm 99% sure doing something like this is not kosher. So I'm just a guy in my basement, entertainment value only. Um, so behind here, uh, I will get a shorter HDMI cable. It's like total overkill and making things messy, but you can see coming out of the ethernet jack we just installed directly into the Pi. Pi is holding up well Velcro to the back there. So I'm happy with that. Uh, when this is gone, you know, it'll, it'll tuck away nicely and you won't even know that it's back there. So, um, thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.